All right, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're looking at this gigantic box called Title Blades Heroes of the Reef. So the theme to this game is we're all trying to be the next Title Blade. And how are they going to figure that out? Well, we're going to have a tournament and whoever has the most points at the end is going to be the next Title Blade. All right, so the game mechanisms revolve a lot around worker placement and dice checking. We're going to be collecting dice to try to complete challenges and also to attack the monsters that are going to be coming out all right so this is going to be the setup and rules breakdown video click on the link below if you want to see my review and playthrough and like usual before we start three things please like subscribe and comment on my youtube channel that'll be fantastic let's go all right so let's deal with the setup to title blade so i'm actually going to set it up in the advanced variant but i'll show you the differences with the base game if you want to play just the base game without any of the special rules all right so the first thing you want to do is set up your island boards right they're always set up in the same way challenge board is up there it's puzzle pieces you're going to put together uh, the fold is on the left here you're going to have the uh, citadel of time the chronoseum the lamara stadium and the droka ring the expansion board it will sit right over here but i'm not going to play with it in this playthrough all right so let's deal with some of these decks of cards so you're going to have a deck of stunt cards you're going to play with the whole deck give it a good shuffle and play it in its little designated spot over here all right next we're going to deal with the lamar stadium you're going to have a little boat either standy or meeple it's always going to start on the start space over here now you do have the judge which is the uh, turtle dude over here uh, he's going to travel between the three islands uh, he's going to have his designated spots over here, 1, 2, and 3. Just pick one randomly for the start of the game, and that's where he's going to start, and then he's going to rotate. All right, next, let's deal with the Citadel of Time, which is the challenge cards, okay? So, if you're playing with just the base game without any advanced cards, there is just a challenge deck without the legendary deck, all right? You're just going to place them all in the middle of the board here. You're going to flip over five cards and fill out the display. One, two, three, four, five. As such. Now, if you are playing the advanced variant, you're going to have more legendary challenge cards. Okay, so they come in different styles. So you're going to see up here there's a name. So this is a split challenge or a hazardous challenge or a swarm challenge. So what you're going to do is you're going to separate all those different types and you're going to take three or four of those different types. The rule book has some suggestions. You're going to shuffle them all together. The last card on the track here, you put it back on top of the deck. We'll shuffle it back in. And the last designated spot there will hold the new deck of uh, legendary challenges. So what you're going to do is you're going to give it a good shuffle. You're going to put the deck there and you're going to flip over the first card. So the last spot there will always contain a legendary challenge. All right, you're going to sort of do the exact same thing for the market. Now, if you're playing with just the base game, uh, all your market cards are just going to be plain like this. Nothing special written at the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to flip over three cards and just fill up the display. And there you go. Now, if you're playing the advanced variant, you're going to do exactly like you did with the challenges. You're going to have different styles of, uh, of market cards. All right, so this is Precious Wisdom and Black Market. Uh, again, you're going to separate them on the side. You're going to pick one or two of these special ones and you're going to shuffle them into the base deck. All right, so they're all going to be shuffled in all together. All right, it doesn't have a special deck like the Citadel of Time challenges. All right, next we're going to get to probably the most complicated setup here, which is the monsters. All right, so the monsters have two types. There's the easy monsters and there's hard monsters. So it says it's going to say right here, uh, easy or hard. All right, so what you're going to do is at the start of the game, if you are playing the advanced variant, you're gonna shuffle all the hard monsters. And then what you're gonna do is the one on top here is gonna have a sort of type. All right, there's three types of monsters in the game. They all deal with the three different colors here, yellow, purple, and orange, all right? But the one on top is gonna have a color. And what you need to do is shuffle the easy monsters, find one of the other two colors you're not using, play them on top, and the rest throw them back in the box. So let's say orange and, I'm uh, sorry, yellow and orange. They're going to go on top. All right, and this is going to be our monster deck. All right, and then you're basically going to flip over the first card for the first round of the game. If you are playing the basic way, what you're going to do is there are some starting monsters that you're going to find in the deck. Uh, you're going to find three easy and three hard. You're going to just stack them on top of each other and you're just going to play them on top of the deck. 
All right, after that, some other things around the game board is you are gonna have your monster die over here. This is a D8. For your Citadel of Time, you do have your danger die. You have a white one on the one, a yellow one on the two, the red one on the four. This is your round tracker. You're gonna put on the number one. All right, you're gonna have your resources on the side of the board and also your huge dice tray, which is a nice handy dandy thing that you can pass around the table. Now for the player boards, pretty simple. All right, each player is going to get one of these boards. Make sure that they all start on the number one of all the tracks. You're going to hand them a bunch of these uh, tokens. This is for the monster fighting. Now, each player is going to get their figure and they're going to start with two tokens. All right, their other two tokens, one of them is going to start on the two and the other one's going to go on the four. So on round two, you're going to get another action pawn and on round four, you're going to get another one. Okay. Now this is the start player marker. Now whoever has this is going to start with two fruit and two shells and then the player after him is going to get an extra fruit, the player after him is going to get an extra shell and the player after him is going to get an, an extra of both. Alright. Alright next, uh, for your starting challenge, if you are playing the basic game you're going to find the one with the icon over here. If you're playing the advanced way, well you just pick one of your three randomly. You're going to take it from your deck, toss the rest in the box. All right. After that, you're going to go through your deck of cards. All right. You're going to go find your shield card, which you're always going to start with. So that's going to start next to you. All right. And after that, if you're playing the basic way, what you're going to do is you're going to find again the token with that symbol on it. So this one. So you're going to start with this special ability card. If you're not playing the basic way, give it a good shuffle, except for that story text card. Throw it out of the game. You're going to draw two cards and you're going to pick one of them. To be your starting ability so let's say i pick this one okay and lastly we got to deal with our starting challenges all right all right so starting challenges we're all going to start with three challenges no matter what all right so uh if you're playing the basic way uh some of these starting challenges here so you're going to see here it says starting uh, you're going to go look for your icon up here and use those as starting or you can alternatively just uh, shuffle this whole deck and just hand three to each to every player but if you want to play a more advanced way, there's two ways of doing it. There's sort of a draft where you're going to start with three of these and then take three of the regular uh, challenges and sort of pass on two and sort of end up with three because you're going to discard three. Uh, but those ways are kind of complicated. I just like to deal three from here, three from there, pick the three that you want and you're ready to go. All right, so that's basically the startup. So let me just deal three of myself and we're ready to go. All right, welcome to the rules breakdown here for Tidal Blade. So at its heart, this is just really a worker placement game with a healthy dose of dice chucking <laughs> to complete challenges and a lot of upgrading our character as well. All right, but the main focus is the worker placement. So on your turn, you're going to be using your worker, which is your mini plus action discs. The action discs in this game just track how many actions you have that round, as well as blocking the space from other players when you go there. All right. For the rest of that turn so for example i can go here and do that action now when you go to a spot on the board you're sort of going to do a three-step process first step is you're going to gain the benefit of the space that you're going to second step is you're going to gain the island bonus if there is one and third step is if you're on this side you can, you can perform a challenge and if you're up there uh, at the fold you can attack the monster and that's basically what you're going to be doing when you finish that sort of sequence you're going to move on to the next player He's going to do the same thing and then you're going to go again to the next player again and again and again. When everyone's done their action discs for the round, the round's over, uh, you're going to go on to the next round. All right, as you can tell here, the game's going to last four rounds. After four rounds, you're going to go to end game scoring. Whoever has the most points is going to be the title blade and the winner of the game. All right. So uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the worker placement aspects of the game. Uh, I am also going to cover the dice and how to upgrade them. And uh, just to give you a quick recap on your player board over here, you do have four dials and throughout the game through challenges and attacking monsters, you're gonna be gaining some bumps up on these dials. And each of these dials stand for something in particular. And let's just give you a quick recap right now. The focus one here, uh, the number is the amount of dice you get to roll uh, per challenge slash attacking monsters. All right? You could pay fruit to add extra dice, but you can get that amount of dice by default. All right, the spirit uh, dial here is all about making those uh, stun cards more powerful. So the higher you are here, the better those cards are going to be for you. 
Synergy is all about getting your special character card. So you are all going to have a deck of character cards and these give, you, give us special abilities throughout the game. And every time you go to a new number, you're going to get another of those cards. And finally, Resilience is all about taking your spent dice at the end of every round and moving them over to your active dice pool and upgrading them. So the upgrading dice, you can turn your white dice into blue or red and so on and so on and so on. All right, so that's how the sort of game is going to flow. All right, actually, before continuing, let's just talk about the dice system in this game because it's sort of important. All right, so you are given a plate aid over here, which will sort of explain to you how the dice get upgraded in the game. All right, so white dice are your most basic dice and they're called the novice dice. All right, so these ones have a bit of all the icons on there, including a wild and a blank. All right, so this one has a chance of rolling every other symbol. Now, when you're going farther to the right, which is the blue and green uh, symbols, or to the left, which is the orange, red, and yellow symbols here, uh, the die distribution will change. Look at the chart, will tell you which faces appear on the dice. All right. So the way upgrading dice works is very important. All right. A white die can upgrade to either the blue or the red. All right. But once you've already gone on that path, well, then it just has to keep going. So the blue will upgrade into the elite. And then an elite, well, then you can choose which of these two guild ones you want. And basically, these ones have the double faces of the two different types of icons that appear on the blue dice. And same thing for the red. Uh, the two uh, guild dice at the end will have the double symbols of the dice that came before. All right, so that's how it works. You're going to, you know, use your dice. You're going to go to your spent area. But then eventually when you're going to be upgrading them, you're just going to be picking better dice and returning the old ones back to the display here. All right, let's start off by talking about all the worker placement spots on the board. All right, so just like I said in the overview, you're going to place your guy on there and you're going to just gain the ability of that spot. So the Chronoseum is all about getting dice. All right, so if you go here, you're going to get a blue die. And whenever you gain dice, you're going to go to the dice pool here and you're going to take the color that you're gaining. So in this example here, it would be blue. And you're going to add it to your player board here. All right, so uh, we're going to talk about this whole player board much later in the video, but whenever you gain dice, it's going to go in this active area over here. And whenever you use them, usually, unless you're fighting a monster, they're going to go to your spent section over here. And then you have to have certain abilities later that'll bring them over back to active. But for right now, all you need to know is when you add dice, you add them down here. All right, so the red one is for red dice. This spot here is for a fruit and a white die. Uh, whenever you get fruit or shell, just take them from the general supply. And this spot here is to get a stunt card. All right, just like I said in the overview, after you perform the action of that spot, your second sort of thing that you're going to do is activate the ability of the island. The ability of this island you can read up here is to draw another stunt card. So essentially by going here, you're going to draw two stunt cards. Next, let's talk about Lamar Stadium. This one's going to give you two fruit and you're going to become first player next turn. This is two shells and this is moving your boat one time. All right, whenever you move your boat in this game, uh, you're going to get the ability of where the boat is passing. So there are ways to move the boat more than once, uh, but you gain each benefit of every spot that you go into. All right. And the island bonus is moving the boat again. So just like up there, when you activate this spot over here, you're going to move the boat twice and gain the benefits of both spots. All right. So what, what are the benefits that you're going to get? This is a stun card, a shell, a championship point. You're going to move your marker on the track up there. Two fruit, a challenge card. So you can take it from the display or the top card up here. A white die. Or if you go all around right here is you get a bump on any of your tracks. All right. So you're just going to move your marker one time. Okay. Next, the Jocosa Ring. All right, so the first stop here is you get one fruit, general supply, and you get to discard any two cards from the display and refresh them from the market. Just FYI, in this game, whenever a card gets taken or discarded, it gets refreshed right away. All right, even if you have to draw two cards, for example, for challenges, you're going to draw, replace, and then you're going to draw again. This spot here is you get two shells and this spot here is you refresh two dice or the dice equal to your resilience all right so you're going to look at your resilience score here all right we're going to talk about this player board later but um essentially the number here is going to tell you how many dice you get to move from your spent die area into your active dice all right so for example if i had two if i had four dice here i'd be able to take any two that i wanted and move them into my active dice this section all right you're going to see that eventually you'll hit three 
And then near the end, you'll hit four. You get to move four dice from here and move them over. All right. And the island ability of going here after you're doing your action is to either get one fruit or buying a card from the market. All right. The cost of any card in the market, it's always paid in fruit normally, unless you're playing with the advanced cards and you're going to take it and get the benefit right away. All right. So this one, for example, is two white dice and a challenge card. This is two shells. This is a bump on the focus. Uh, uh, track and so on and so on. So they each have a special ability Next let's talk about the Citadel of Time. All right, so Meditation Spring So this is a spot that everyone can go to you can even go there multiple times in a turn And what that spot lets you do is move all your dice no matter how many from your spent Area into your active area. So even if you had all six of your dice remember max six dice into spent it can go into active And finally there are three more spots over here I know it's all one spot, but you know, you can each spot can be taken once. Now, this is for a challenge card. This is three fruit, and you get to discard two of the challenge cards in the display. And this is three shells. All right. Uh, now, the ability of this island after you do your action is to draw two more challenge cards. All right, just like I explained before, you get to draw them one at a time, or you get to draw them off the top of the deck. Right, so if you take one of the advanced or legendary ones, it gets replenished from the legendary deck. But if you take any of the basic ones, it gets replenished from the top of the deck right away. And you get to draw two, so you get to take one, refresh, see what it is, and then draw another one. All right, and the last place to talk about is the fold. All right, so this one's a bit different. So in all the other four islands, you're gonna do your first action and then you're gonna do the island action. The fold doesn't actually have an island action. All you're gonna do is activate that spot. Boom. So here's for three shells and here's for two shells. Basically, you're gonna end up attacking the monster at the end of, or your third sort of action for that round. But here you're gonna get three shells and attack this monster. Here you're gonna get two sh shells and attack this monster if there was one here. All right, so those are the first two things you're doing on your turn. The next thing is either a challenge or attacking a monster. All right, so next let's talk about challenges. So the first thing I need to note is that challenges are optional, all right? So remember, when you're doing the action on the spot and then doing the action of the island, the third thing that you do is a challenge. You don't have to do a challenge. So if you don't have the challenge card there, you don't have to do one. And even if you did, you don't have to do it. All right, so now how do challenges work? All right, so a couple of things to note is that the Icon in the top left is the area you need to be in to perform the challenge, right? So this one is for a Jocosa Ring challenge. There's one, a red one's for Lamar Stadium and there's purple ones for the Chrono scene. All right, next, if you look at the middle here, the solid line is the definite requirement to pass the challenge and the dotted line is optional, right? Uh, I mean, they're handy to get because they're gonna raise your stats, but you don't need to get the dotted line one to pass the challenge. All right, next, what you need to know is the bottom right here, these are the points you're gonna get at the end of the game, uh, no matter what, if you pass the challenge. All right, so let's look at an example of doing a challenge. So I'm just gonna put the card here, for example. So uh, first thing you're gonna do is go to your player board, all right? And you're gonna try to figure out how much dice you get to roll uh, for that challenge. So for that, you're always gonna look at your focus uh, board over here. All right, so the number displayed is how much dice you get to roll uh, for a particular challenge. You don't need to roll all the dice. So even if my focus was at four, all right, and this only needed two, I didn't need to roll four dice. I can roll up to four dice. Uh, but in this example, let's say it's the start of the game. I only have one, so I get to roll one die uh, to beat this challenge. Now I can try to get lucky and just get the solid line and I'll pass the challenge. But let's say I wanted to get both. I would want to roll at least two dice. So let's say I want to roll both of my blue ones and there you go so now for each extra die you want to roll you have to pay a fruit so you're going to take a fruit from your personal supply and add it back to your general supply and you'll get to add an extra die all right so in this example here i'm going to roll two dice to try to finish this uh challenge all right now whenever you perform a challenge you're always going to take the current round markers uh danger die all right so this is going to go for monsters as well as challenges, all right? And these are the dice you're gonna roll to try to uh, accomplish the challenge. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll and you're gonna assign these dice to the card. All right, so in this case here, I got one shield I can put on here and then the other one's a blank, so it doesn't apply. All right, now what does the dan danger die do? 
right? Uh, they're pretty much just blanks and X's. So all the dice just have different uh, combinations of X's and blanks. Uh, what this means is if every time you roll an X, what you need to do is block the damage. And how you do that is you're going to put a shell onto your shield. Okay. So that blocks that die. All right. And this is the sort of push your luck aspect of the game. I can just keep rolling as many times as you want. Just keep in mind that every time I roll, I got to roll that danger die. And if I roll an X, I got to just keep adding uh, shields, shells to my shield. All right. So let's just go with another example here. I can roll again. And again, I didn't roll it, but I did roll an X. So I'm going to put another shell on my shield. And then I can just keep going, trying to hit that value. All right, at any point, if you did succeed, so have all the solid lines filled up, you could quit and succeed the challenge. All right, if you don't have all of them filled up, you can sort of still quit, and then, but you're gonna fail the challenge, or you can just keep going and try to fill them all up. All right, so let's say I would roll again, and let's just say I rolled a question mark with a blank. All right, a question mark is wild. It can be any symbol in the game, even the ones that don't appear on the die. You put it on the die, and then you'll pass the challenge. All right. So what do you get for passing the challenge? First of all, is you get bumps on the dials according to the symbols. All right. So even if you filled up just one, you'll get one bump on the dial. If you filled up both, you get two bumps on the dial. So you're going to go to your dial and these were the shields and you're going to rotate it that many spots. So I got two, so I'm going to rotate it twice. All right. Now, the other thing you're going to get from this card is you're going to slot it underneath the area where it belongs. So these are the Jacosa ring ones. These are the uh, uh, Chronoseum cards and these are the Lamar Stadium cards. They're going to go down here. These are going to come into play when we talk about fighting the monsters. These are called fighting styles that we're sort of uh, putting below over here. All right. And after you're done, you, all the dice that you use are going to go into your spent area over here. Uh, you're going to put the danger die back to where it belongs in the current round marker so that the next player can take it. All right, and that's how challenges work. Sorry, just a couple of notes. If you do succeed a challenge where the judge is, that's why he's moving around, you're gonna gain one bump on the championship board. All right, and if you ever complete a set of challenges, all right, so every time you complete a set, you are also gonna gain two more bumps on the championship board. So for example, in this example, if I were to gain the card and I would get a new set, I'll gain two more jumps up on the track. All right, next let's talk about attacking a monster and this works the exact same way as challenges uh, except for a few extra steps all right so first you're going to pick which monster you want to attack all right and what you're going to try to do is just like challenges hit the sort of uh, icons that are on the card all right uh, just like challenges after the battle with a monster whatever you covered up you're going to gain those amount of uh, upgrades on your dials all right so in this case let's say i rolled three focus i cover up the three focus and i'll gain three focus jumps on my dial all right when fighting a monster you are going to notice some of these darkened spaces these requ these are like shields and they require upgraded dice with those symbols to break the shield all right so this requires at least a solid blue die all right, you can put a, an elite die, for example, to take this out, but it needs at least a solid blue. And this one actually needs at least an elite die. All right, so it needs a pretty powerful die just to do that. But the advantage of breaking the shields is you are going to get some jumps up on the championship board over there. All right, so if I take out both the shields, I'll jump up twice on the board. All right, now some differences when fighting monsters. All right, the first difference is when you start a battle with a monster, the first thing you're going to do is look at the current uh, sort of fighting style of that monster. All right, so in this example here, it's Lamara Stadium. All right, you're going to go to your player board and you're going to count the amount of cards you have under that type. All right, in this case, it's zero. So I would add no dice to my pool. All right, and this is a free die. All right, so remember, just like challenges and fighting monsters, you're going to create your pool to start. So let's say I had a two, but I want to roll three die. I'm going to add one more fruit into the general supply. So that would be three, but you always get a free die. So it would be my fourth die with the fighting style. All right. Zero cards means no dice. If you had at least one card, you're going to pick up a Nova, Nova's die and roll it. If you had two cards, you're going to pick up one of the advanced dice and so on and so on. Three cards, the next one, four cards, one of the guild uh, dice. 
you're gonna add, throw them all together remember always adding the danger die when attacking a monster as well and then apply the damage and you can just keep going and rolling and rolling try to damage him even more all right the second difference between monsters and challenges is all the dice that you used to attack the monster are not sent to your spent dice area they're discarded back into the uh, tray all right so you are going to lose all your dice when you attack a monster um, the third difference is when you damage a monster what you're going to be doing is putting your uh, chits on the monster spots all right to cover them up okay now every chit that you put on a monster will count as a victory point no matter what all right so whether you kill the monster or not and it slides off it doesn't matter it's going to be a victory point all right so if it slides off you're just going to create a pool next to the uh, area over here and these are going to be things you're going to count at the end of the game all right also if the damage is completely filled up anyone that has at least one damage chit on the monster is going to get the reward bonus of that monster all right so in this case it would be advance any trait by two notches so change one of your dials by up by two And that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go there, you're gonna get your shells, you're gonna attack a monster, you're gonna get your free die. You're gonna roll, roll, roll. Either quit early or quit when you fully fill it up or when you're done rolling. All right, and then you're gonna put your chits out there and then that's the end of your turn. All right, just as a reminder, all these dotted spaces mean that multiple players can go there during the same round to attack the same monster. All right, so at the end of the round, when everyone's done all their actions and everyone has no more action discs left, you're going to go to end of round. All right, for end of round, you're going to follow the exact same eight steps in order. All right, so first thing is, one of these two monsters are going to invade. You're going to take the monster die, you're going to roll it, all right, and on one through five, this monster invades, and a six through eight, this monster is going to invade. Now, very important, in this game, if you do have a damage chit on that monster, you are immune to the invasion. But let's just say I rolled a one, this one's going to invade, you're going to look at the card, and everyone's going to suffer the penalty here, all right, if you don't have a chit, so it's lose a die. When you lose a die, you can take it either from your spent die pool or your active die pool. All right, after that, you're going to advance the monsters, all right, so you're going to advance all the monsters down, and you're going to reveal a new one, all right, if there was some empty spots, you just move them down either way. All right, next, you're going to remove the fleeing monster from the game, all right, so any chits that were on that monster that dropped off, are going to go in a pool next to the board here these are going to count still for victory points at the end of the game all right and you are going to be immune to the negative championship bump all right so if you didn't have a chit on here what ends up happening is let's say i was here you're going to lose one spot on the championship board here if you had a chit on here you'd be immune to that bump back after that you'll remove this from the game all right next you're going to upgrade your dice all right so for this one what you're gonna do is you're gonna go look at your current resilience all right this is gonna tell you how many dice you get to move from your spent pool into your active pool and you get to uh, upgrade those dice all right so for example if I were to move both of these dice I get to upgrade them and then move them here all right if I wanted to move these two I'll move them here and upgrade these two all right so the ones you're upgrading are the ones you're moving all right, and for upgrading, like I mentioned in the overview, you're going to look at this chart here and you're going to get the next die in line. All right, after performing your upgrade of your dice, all right, you're going to return all your player pieces uh, back to your supply. So basically all your discs and your worker. All right, next you're going to check the championship board and you're going to look at the uh, who's ahead on the track. And whoever's ahead, you're going to look at the round marker. You're going to put one of their damage chits on round on the current round all right it, for any ties all right even if two people were on three and one person didn't move on it yet you're not going to add a chit you have to be solely in first place and those chits are just going to be extra victory points at the end of the game all right so let's say echo was ahead they would add their token on the number one round one and there you go so it's the same thing's going to happen on rounds two and three but on round four you're not going to do that you're going to score extra stuff uh, you're going to look at the right over there all right, next you're going to move the judge. The judge always moves in clockwise fashion. You're just going to take him, move him to the next island. Then the following turn, he's going to move here, and then he's going to move, sorry, here, and then he's going to move back to the chronosphere. And finally, you're just going to move the round tracker to the next one. All right, so just like I explained in the overview, 
on rounds two you're gonna get another action this so you're gonna have three actions and then if we were going to round four you can get the last action disc as well all right let's take two seconds to talk about your shield all right so during the game you're going to be adding shells to your shield remember to block damage um and your shield has some special abilities all right so moving the shell to the shield is the first one to prevent the x we already talked about that uh next if you do have four shells on your shield you can actually discard those four and put them into the general supply to change any die that you rolled that round to any face you want all right so let's say i rolled a blank i can spend four shields and turn it into a question mark all right and then i can apply this to the card challenge or the monster to do them more damage all right the other option you have is if you add six uh, shells on your shield you can discard all six to refresh two dice so if you had two dice in your spent you can move them into your active okay uh, just as a friendly reminder, from turn to turn, at most you can have is six shells on your shield, so you must spend some, uh, or or else the extra that you have, you're gonna end up discarding them and getting nothing for it. All right, let's talk about stunt cards next. Uh, so throughout the game, you're gonna be collecting these stunt cards, and they're each gonna have their own sort of ability. Just read the text, and these stunt cards all sort of interact with your level of spirit. All right, so depending on your spirit level that's going to be the strength of these cards so for example if the spirit was at three and i would perform this card and you read this card as if it was strength three and so on and so on so for example this one gets you a market card equal to the fruit value of your spirit so i can get a actual market card that costed three or less all right and so on and so on all right you are going to have other cards like this one where you're actually going to look at your current level of your spirit and you're going to gain that benefit uh when you use the card now, very important note is you can use at most one card per turn. So even if you had five of these cards and you're sort of keeping them all in your hand, every single turn, you can only use one card. All right? And you can pretty much use it at any time on your turn. All right? So before your action, in between actions, during a battle, whenever you want, just take the card, discard it, apply its effect, and then just move on. All right, next let's talk about your player cards and how they work in regards to your synergy. So your synergy value will actually tell you how many of these character cards you will have in front of you. And all of these are special abilities that your character will have. All right, so every time you would bump up and you would get to a new number, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw two cards off the top of your deck and pick one, and the card you don't pick goes back underneath your deck, and the other one is gonna be another card that you're gonna add to your display. All right, so when you get to three, you're gonna get another card. When you get to four, you're gonna get another card. All right, there is other ways with some of the special market cards to get other cards. All right, so what you're gonna do, again, you draw two, you pick one. Let's say I wanted this one, I'll put this in front of me and the other one's gonna go underneath the deck. And then I'm gonna have a special ability. All of these are sort of game breaking things. You just really gotta read the card and the icons will sort of help you on the side. All right, there are some other special cards you could get in your deck. All right, if you do choose um, the shield upgrade, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it underneath your uh, current shield and you're gonna have another way to use the shells that are on your shield. But if you decided to do the advanced shield, all right, it's actually gonna replace your previous shield and any shells that you had on there are gonna get re returned to the new shield. All right, so those are pretty much all the rules. The last thing to talk about is the end game scoring. All right, so you're gonna score exactly four things. All right, so the first thing you're gonna score is all the challenges that you've done. Just look in the bottom right, all right just total them all together. All right, the second thing you're going to score is your uh, trait dials. All right, so you're going to see here, there's the point values on the dials, and you're going to score for where that dial is. So for example, this dial will score me five points. This dial is going to score me two. This one's only going to score me one because you go back to the last display number, and this one's going to score me two, for example. All right, after that, you're going to score the points that are on the championship board and the monster hit points. All right, so uh, you're going to have some points here on the round leaderboards and also on the final leaderboard over here. And then you're going to add all the chits that you have currently on monsters and the monsters that fell off the track or defeated monsters. You're going to add all those together. Those are going to be points, one point per chit. And finally, you're going to look at your special bonus sort of objective from the start of the game. All right, so you're just gonna read it. So here's for synergy. If you did four of those, then you're gonna get seven points. If you did five, you're gonna get an extra 10 points. You're gonna total all that together. Whoever has the most points is gonna be the next title blade. So uh, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, click on the link below for my review and my playthrough. If not, we'll see you in the next one. Later.